Another round of flooding is threatening the western part of the state. He's the third man wanted in the brutal assault of an 82 year old Kelly woman. So Matt question did President Trump actually elaborate on how these restarted negotiations will take place? 70,000 fans turn and wait. We'll learn how movie soundtrack composers create those creepy tunes. You know the ones that literally make us jump out of our seats. Listen to that roar and you can see the glow of the come and go building downtown and the lightning strike shaking it up. There are calls for the Senate Judiciary Committee to investigate the death of disgraced financier and accused sex trafficker Jeffrey Epstein. Well, here in Ames, people were just excited about college game day taking over the entire city and fans went all out with signs and outfits. They rocked their school colors proudly and loudly. There's the Washington State Cougar fan I see there. <laughs> they Random. always sneak that one in. And Matinka, the sky held up for us last night, but you're telling me some rain is moving in by way of Kansas right yeah, now. That's right. Stay with us, everyone. Another full hour of KCCI 8 News this morning weekend starts right now. KCCI 8 News this morning starts right now. Right now at 5 o'clock, a Des Moines man is dead and another is injured following a shooting. The violence that's stunning neighbors right next door. An Altoona family is displaced after their townhome goes up in flames the damage that's left behind. And parking problems, what has concert goers complaining about the new Waterworks Park Amphitheater? Good morning, everyone. Thanks so much for joining us on KCCI 8 News this morning weekend. It's just after five o'clock on June 29th, and it's shaping up to be a really mm. hot weekend. Matinka, you got the times for us there. When is the heat gonna start setting in? We're really gonna notice Right now, Des Moines police are searching for the shooter responsible for killing one man and injuring another. It happened yesterday on the city's north side in the area near 22nd and Martin Luther King Jr. Parkway. KCCI's Max Deke Knight spoke with several people who say they knew the victim and they're shocked. He was one of my son's best friends. This morning, we are expecting to learn the names of the victims and you can get information as soon as it's released. We'll have it on our KCCI mobile app. Download it for free in the App Store. Right now, Des Moines police are trying to figure out how a teenager was shot. We spoke to police sergeant Paul Parizek. He tells KCCI the teen was walking near 6 in Indiana last night when he heard a shot ring out. The 15-year-old then realized he was the one the bullet hit. And then shot in the leg, he went to Mercy Medical Center for help. The injury is said to be minor. He was released from the hospital last night. Fire in Altoona. Crews were called to the Triple Crown Apartments and townhomes yesterday afternoon. The blaze was contained to one unit, but others may have smoke damage. Total damage is estimated at $80,000. The fire department says it doesn't appear to be suspicious. One person is fighting for their life right now after a car crashed into wind turbine equipment. It happened just after 9.30 Thursday night in a farm field a few miles southeast of Greenfield. Three people were in the car that crashed. Troopers don't know why, though, they were driving in that field. The Iowa Supreme Court is upholding a controversial police practice. It's known as pretextual traffic stops. These stops allow officers to charge drivers with crimes they may not have been pulled over for. It comes in a decision to uphold the conviction against Scott Ties Brown. In 2015, Brown was pulled over by a Waterloo police officer. Law enforcement says he had a license plate light that was out. However, he was actually arrested for operating while intoxicated. Some argue that stop was racially discriminatory. A huge change could be coming to one of the largest health care systems here in Iowa. Unity Point Health announced plans to explore a merger with South Dakota-based Sanford Health. KCCI's investigative reporter Alex Schumann shows us this merger and how it could make Unity Point one of the largest nonprofit health care systems in the country. Unity Point says if the merger is approved, it would become the 15th largest healthcare system in the United States. Now, Unity Point did not say if the merger would impact their employees that are here in the Des Moines Metro. Flooding in downtown Des Moines this spring means the Iowa Department of Transportation will shut down its data center. That'll happen about an hour from now over at the Hoover Building. So at 6 o'clock this morning, they'll replace some damaged equipment there. The DOT says it does not expect the data center will be shut down for long, but it isn't sure how long it will actually take to remove and then replace the flood damaged equipment. New this morning, Des Moines 
most popular park is back open. Yes, Gray's Lake Park has been closed since mid May, but it just reopened a few minutes ago, right at five o'clock. They have been trying to replace the trail surface, but flooding has caused plenty of delays. It's going to be hot this weekend, so don't forget swimming. That'll be allowed once again at the beach. Shoreline reconstruction crews created a trail detour, though, but that is forcing them to shut down one parking lot. So keep that in mind if you're headed over there. Your time is 507 and Matinka for people wanting to go swimming today. That might be a great relief because things are going to be feeling like 100 degrees out there. I don't know how I feel about that. <laughs> it's going to be really hot, uncomfortable to be outdoors with climbing above 100 degrees. So make sure you take a lot of breaks, head for the shade and keep those cold towels handy. The shade sounds nice. Well, the brand new Lordson Amphitheater in Des Moines Waterwork Park held its first concert last night, but the night had a few kinks. Brett Young fans had to park a half a mile away. The new parking lot wasn't open because it was too wet and too muddy. And with floor drive down to one lane each way, that made getting to the venue a real struggle. The manager says not all the amenities are ready to go and that nearby construction is going on at the worst possible time. Timing couldn't be worse um, of our first concert. You know, Fleur is down to one lane traffic each direction and we're, our gates open at six o'clock tonight, which is prime time, prime drive time. So it is gonna be a traffic issue. And picture this, when the concert was over, all those cars and all the 4,000 concert goers bottlenecked. They had to get out of there at the same time in that single lane on Fleur Drive, causing quite the backup. New this morning, President Trump says he's agreed to restart trade talks with China. The overnight agreement comes at the close of the G20 summit in Japan. President Trump had threatened to impose an additional $300 billion in Chinese tariffs on imports. However, those are now being put on hold for the time being. We're going to work with China on where we left off to see if we can make a deal. China is going to start uh, they're going to be consulting with us and they're going to start spending money even during the negotiation to our farmers, our great farmers in the Midwest. Who I call them the great patriots because that's what they are. They're patriots. President Trump also lifted a ban against the Chinese technology firm Huawei. Now American companies can do business with them. Last month, the Trump administration banned Huawei because of security concerns. In Commitment 2020, Dr. Jill Biden, the wife of presidential candidate and former Vice President Joe Biden is in Des Moines. Dr. Jill Biden was campaigning last night for her husband at a meet and greet event at the Iowa State Historical Building. She discussed Joe Biden's decision to get in the race for the presidency. So Joe's decided, we decided as a family that we were gonna give this a shot again. Um, when we left the Obama-Biden administration, really, we um, hadn't thought about this. Um, as you know, in, in, uh, he was asked to run in 2015, 2016, and after uh, Bo's death, we just, we just couldn't do it. This event comes one day after Joe Biden's appearance in the first round of Democratic primary debates. Also, speaking of that, candidate Jay Inslee is in Des Moines, too. The governor of Washington state and the Democratic presidential hopeful held a meet and greet last night at Tower Park. Inslee took part in the first Democratic debate as well on Wednesday night. All right, 5-11, that's your time now. Deadly dog disease, what you need to look out for the next time you feed your pet and treating children with CBD. Iowa Senator Charles Grassley introduces new legislation. What could eventually open up cannabis-based treatment to more people in Iowa?